this tutorial we're going to be making a beginner dishcloth. So we're going to be making it together and we're going to go through all the steps to create your dishcloth. I'm going to tell you how to create the single crochet, how to start with your foundation chain, how to change colours here in the middle to work the pattern up, how to fasten off and then how to sew in your ends. So you will need a 4.5mm crochet hook or a 4 depending on how small you want your dishcloth to be but I have used a 4.5 and I have used some DK weight cotton for this tutorial. Now you can find a link below to the Lovecraft website um, which you can find this cotton on. Um, the This cotton that I'm using is the paint box cotton that is only available on the Lovecraft website. The link below is an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you to click on it. You will buy your beautiful yarn and then Lovecrafts will give me a commission based on your purchase. So let's jump straight in to making this dishcloth. So in today's tutorial, we are going to be making the dishcloth. To get started, we need to chain um, a foundation chain of 30. Now I'm going to go through every step with you because this is a beginner tutorial and I would like everybody to be able to have a go. But if you want to pause the video and race ahead, hopefully the chapters at the bottom will be able to help you do that better. So to get started, we need to make a slip knot. Now you can make this in your own method or you can follow along with me. I like to hold my yarn and wrap it around my finger twice. Then I pull the middle loop up over the first loop then the first loop up over the middle loop and the middle loop up and off my finger creating that slip knot. Then insert your hook and pull it tight, not too tight but <laughs> tight and then we're going to create our foundation chain. Holding your yarn is a bit tricky and everybody does it differently so if you're not comfortable holding your yarn in exactly the same way as me please um, don't get discouraged, hold your yarn however you feel is best. So to do our foundation chain we need to create our chains and to do this holding our working yarn we need to put the hook under our yarn, turn our hook so it's facing downwards and our hook holds underneath the hook at the end and then you just want to pull your hook back through that loop that's on your hook to create your first chain so we'll go over that again so you've got one loop on your hook yarn under your work and turn your hook so it grabs the yarn that you're working with and then pull your hook back through that loop to create another chain and you just want to continue to do that to create 30 chains, so you need to do that 30 times in total to get 30 chains and now you can count them. If we look at our chains here, they look like little V stitches and that's your chain. So you're counting your chains upwards until you've got 30, then you can meet me back and we'll move on to our single crochet and creating the bottom half of our dishcloth. Once you've created your foundation chain, it should look a little something like this. And now we're going to get started on our single crochets. This is a really good project to practice your single crochet because the whole project, you guessed it, is made from single crochet. And now I'm using US terms in this pattern. If you are used to using UK terms, then this stitch is known as a double crochet. And there will be a conversion chart or a link to a conversion chart in the description box below. So starting our single crochets. Not counting this loop on our hook or this loop here, we're working into the second chain from the hook. So this is one and this is two. Insert your hook under that loop, so just one loop there. So that first loop, insert your hook so it looks like you've got two loops on the hook. Then you want to yarn over and pull through just one loop and you've still got two loops on your hook. You want to yarn over in the same way that you made your chains and pull back through both loops on the hook and you've created your first single crochet. Now we're going to go into our next loop here and create another single crochet. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull back through just the one loop so you have two loops on your hook and you want to yarn over again and pull through two. 
I'm going to show you one more time and then you're going to do single crochets in every single chain to the end and you can pause and rewind the video if you need to. So insert underneath that next, or in, in the middle of that chain, just put your hook so you get one loop on the hook. Then yarn over and pull back through so you have two loops on your hook. And then yarn over again and pull through those two loops to create your single crochet. And you want to do that in each chain all the way to the end and then I'm going to show you how to turn and move on to the next row and how to build our work using single crochets. So, Like I said pause and rewind the video if you need to and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. Once we've created our row of single crochets it your work should look a little something like this. Um, don't worry if it's a twisted or curling like mine is slightly it will straighten out as we build to move on to the next row so what we've done here your foundation chain doesn't count as a row it's just a base chain for us to start working our stitches if you're extremely new to crochet um, it might be a good idea now to keep a tally um, somewhere of how many rows you've completed so we have just completed in row one but we're, we're working row 1 to 10 of single crochets before we change colour. So you can keep a tally 1 and now we're moving on to 2. Um, and when you've completed that, put another mark down. And then once you've got 10 marks, you know that you've completed 10 rows. And that should um, help you a little bit. Um, it, it'll make it a little bit easier, sorry to count your rows if you're not used to seeing your stitches or you're not used to seeing how stitches are built. So working now, we've just completed our last single crochet of this row here. We need to chain one. So as we did our foundation chain, just do a chain one and then we need to turn our work. So now we're working on the wrong side of our work. So this is our chain one here that we have just created, this part here, and our first stitch is this here. So looking from the top of our work, our stitches, if you can see, are going to look like little Vs. Sorry, I know it's white on white, but um, I wanted to create a white and pink dishcloth. <laughs> um, our stitches should look like little Vs, and this time we are working underneath that V to create our stitches and that's how you build every row after the foundation row working into those V's, that stitch there. So to get going we're going to work into that first stitch so just here if we pull our work apart a bit we can see that this is our first stitch and then this is our second stitch so working into our first stitch here with a single crochet just as we were single crocheting before and then in each stitch along, making sure you're going under that V all the way to the end again. And then you will chain one and turn just like we have just done until you have 10 rows of single crochet. So the row we're working on now is row two. And when we get to the end, we chain and turn, we'll be working on row three. So as I said, it's extremely useful if you're new to crochet to keep a little tally so you know when you've got um, or completed 10 rows. So I'm going to leave you to create those 10 rows. If you need a refresher, pause, rewind the video back to the end of row one so you know how to chain one and turn your work or pause and rewind the video back to the beginning so you get a refresher of that single crochet. So I'll leave you and I'll meet you back once you have made 10 rows and then we're going to look at the colour change um, so we can create the pattern in our dishcloth. So once we've reached um, nearly the end, all bar one stitch of our 10th row, we're going to change colour to move on to the next row to start building the pattern. So to change colour at the end of a row, insert your hook just like you would when you're creating single crochets in any other stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Now to complete this stitch as normal, we'd yarn over and pull through both loops on our hook. But we're actually going to bring in our new colour. So I've chosen pink 
and I'm going to yarn over with the new colour. So I'm going to hold the new colour as if it was my working yarn now. Yarn over, pull through both of those loops, then chain one and turn. I've already cut my white yarn here. As you can see, it's not attached to a ball. Um, so go ahead and cut your white yarn. You're going to be using your um, new colour for this row. So um, you won't be needing that. It might just get in the way if it's all dangling down and still attached. So now using our new colour, we are just going to continue as we did before, one, crochet, one single crochet sorry, in each space all the way to the end. Just as before, creating those single crochets. So apart from the colour change, there's nothing different about this row. Um, we're still doing our single crochets and we're still building our work in the same way. So in every single stitch under both of those loops with your new working yarn and I'll meet you at the end where we're going to go over the colour change again back to, uh, well I'm going to go back to white. So I'll meet you at the end and go over that with you again. So I'm now at the end of my row again and I just have one stitch left so I'm going to go over the colour change with you one more time um, and then I'm going to let you know uh, the rest of the pattern. So we insert our hook underneath that last stitch just as we would any other stitch. Yarn over and pull through and it's like it's half halfway through making that single crochet. Instead of yarning over with our working yarn, we're going to yarn over with our new colour. So I'm changing back to white for this. So I'm going to hold my white as if it was my working yarn. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops with that white, chain one and turn. Then I'm going to cut off my pink yarn because this is still attached to the ball. If you're finding that this stitch looks a bit pulled up or misshapen, just pull down on both those strands to bring them back um, to the tension that you're working with. So when we're cutting our yarn, leave a long, longish tail, so maybe ten, seven or so centimetres, um, just so you have enough to sew it in and make sure that when you sew it in, it's nice and secure. So now we're going to be working with our white yarn and we're going to do two rows of the white yarn. So we're going to go back and then across for two rows and then we're going to change back to our pink for three rows. So you can crochet along with me or you can go ahead and do that and then meet me back later in the video. So I'll leave you to do your two rows of white just in a single crochet like we've worked before and then I'll meet you back for the colour change um, just to go over that with you one more time. So I have now done my two rows of white and I'm going to change colour back to the pink to do my next three rows to, to start building this pattern. So I have already inserted and yarned over with my white. So to finish this single crochet, I'm just going to use my pink here as my working yarn. I'm going to yarn over and pull through both those loops on my hook, then chain one and turn my work. I'm going to leave um, a bit of a tail with the white and then snip that and move it to the side. And now I'm going to start to build three rows of pink. After you've done your three rows of pink, if you uh, don't want to stay till the end of the video to see the finished item, the pattern repeat is two rows of white, one row, one row of pink, sorry, and then ten rows of white. So. After our three rows of pink, this section that you can see on the screen now is just mirrored. So if you don't want to stay till the end of the video, that's the pattern, so you can go ahead and make it. But if you'd like to stay and crochet along with me, I would really appreciate it. If you love my channel, then please like and subscribe um, to my videos. It really helps when you subscribe to my channel because it means that I know you love the content and that you want to see more. So. Let's go ahead and create our three rows of pink, then I'll meet you back for two rows of white and I'll go over that colour change with you one more time. So I'm now at the stage where I'm ready to change colours back to my white. So remember if you're not joining us for the rest of the pattern, thank you for staying so far. Um, and the pattern here is just mirrored, so our next two rows are going to be white, then a pink, then ten rows of white. So to change colour, insert our hook 
underneath that last stitch, yarn over and pull through, then bring in your new colour as you're working yarn, hold and just yarn over and pull through. Chain one and turn your work. Remember to just tug on those strands a little bit if your stitches are looking a bit stretched and distorted. So you can see mine here look quite stretched. So if I pull down on that pink, it brings it all together quite nicely. So I'm just going to cut my pink yarn here, leaving a bit of a tail. And then I'm going to turn my work and do two rows of white. So I'll meet you back once I've finished my two rows of white here. Um, and then we're going to go on to a row of pink and ten more rows of white. I'm here with my two rows of white complete and I'm ready to yarn over um, in my last stitch with my pink colour, my next colour, chain one and turn. So as you can see it's building up really really nicely and this section here is just a mirror of this bit here. So I'm going to go ahead, cut my white yarn off and um, crochet one row of pink and then 10 rows of white. I'm actually going to meet you back this time once I've completed my uh, one row of pink and uh, 10 rows of white. Um, I'm confident that you can change colour now and complete a single crochet which is an, uh, is an amazing achievement in itself. But I want to meet you back on the next stage when we look at fastening off our work, so how to tie off and then I'm just going to um, show you how to sew in some of these ends. So I'll leave you to do it. If you need a refresher, pause and rewind the video and I'll meet you back when you've completed your very last stitch of white. So I've now completed the last stitch in, in my dishcloth. So to fasten off, we're just going to chain one um, as we would when we were chaining our foundation chain at the bottom. So we're just going to uh, yarn over and pull, pull your yarn through the loop on the hook and then cut our working yarn, so cut it off here, and then continue to pull that yarn through the loop and pull it down really, really tight so you can't see that chain one and that will secure your work. Now we're going to sew in the ends. So as you can see, we've got quite a few ends from our um, color changes. So I'm just gonna sew an end in with you and then you can go away and sew them all in and use your dishcloth. You'll need a, um, a yarn needle, darning needle, whatever kind of needle um, you've got to sew in. So if we take uh, just a, an end that we've got here, so I'm going to use a pink end and you're going to thread your yarn into your needle. Then when looking, looking at your work, you just want to go underneath the same colour stitches but also through some of the stitches so through the fibres of the stitches rather than just a straight underneath and you're just going to do that through the first few stitches um, because you want to go back on yourself um, just to secure in that yarn because you're going to cut very close to um, to the work on the tail so that tail doesn't show. So thread that through and then you just want to go back along the same same bit through those fibres and out the side of your work. Now I always sew um, with a rule of three so I go forwards then backwards then forwards again. As you can see there I've kind of it's quite a big gap so I'm just going to take that out because I didn't go under this bit here so it looks a bit weird so I'm going to go under there now just so we don't have big we want the um the end to blend in with our work so that um the end isn't seen just going to thread that in Okay, so that's two and then I go back on myself one more time just to secure in that end. So through the fibres of the yarn as well as underneath the stitches and then all you're going to do is oh, what's that one? cut really close to your work where that yarn is so that you can't see that there's an end there. And you're going to do that for every single end 
um, on your dishcloth and then once you've done that you've got a dishcloth that's ready to use remember to sew in your tail from the beginning and your tail from that last stitch as well not just the color change ones and that's it so again if you loved this video then please like and subscribe um, every every like every subscription to my channel really helps me to then go ahead and build out my channel so i'll leave you to it i hope you enjoyed this pattern and i'll see you again for the next one